Hi, greetings to everyone and uh, welcome to my channel. So in today's video lecture, we're going to discuss the empowering rural Philippines, the strategies for sustainable development. So please like, follow and subscribe our channel to be more updated related to agribusiness and uh, agriculture. So let's grow together. So in today's lecture, we're going to delve into the rural development and community empowerment in the Philippines. So in this session, we will delve in the challenges faced by our rural communities in the Philippines, explore initiatives aimed at empowering these communities, and discuss the practical examples of implementation to achieve sustainable development. First, um, let's talk about the understanding the context of rural development in the Philippines. So, in the Philippines, we are in an archipelago with the diverse rural landscapes, um, different culture, different tradition, different belief system, and uh, our agriculture remains a vital sector. Despite of our economic growth, rural areas continue to face challenges such as poverty, lack of infrastructure, and the vulnerability to natural disaster. And rural development is very crucial for the initiative in poverty alleviation, inclusive growth, and reducing the disparities between the urban and the rural areas. So what are the key challenges faced by our rural communities? First is the limited access to market infrastructure. So many rural areas la lack a what we call adequate transportation and making it difficult for our farmers to access a market and sell their product up their produce at fair prices. Then poverty and food insecurity. A significant portion of the rural population lives below the poverty line, facing the challenges related to inadequate nutrition and food security. Then the vulnerability or to natural disaster. The Philippines is uh, prone to typhoons, to floods, and earthquakes, which often devastate our rural communities and disrupt livelihoods. So what are the initiatives for our community empowerment? We have a what we call community-based organization. For example, our farmers' cooperatives, women's group, and youth organizations that mobilize resources and address the local needs. So the community-based organization empower the communities by fostering a collective decision-making and promoting a what we call social cohesion. And at the same time, uh, this uh, organization implements a what we call development projects. Then we have a what we call sustainable agriculture practices. Promoting organic farming, the crop diversification, and agroforestry techniques to enhance the what we call productivity and resilience to climate change. Example is the, ka is the Gawad Kalinga Enchanted Farm in Bulacan integrates a what we call organic farming with social entrepreneurship, providing training and livelihood opportunities to our local communities. Then we, we have a what we call microfinance livelihood programs, providing access to credit and financial services to support small-scale entrepreneurs and micro enterprises in rural areas. Example, the Grameen Bank model was being adopted by the organizations like the Negros Women for Tomorrow Foundation that seeks to empower women in rural communities through microfinance and skills training. Then, part of the initiative is the infrastructure development. Investing in rural infrastructure such as roads, bridges, irrigation system, and electrification to improve access to market and basic services. Example is the Philippine Rural Development Project that supports the infrastructure development in rural areas, 
enhancing the agricultural productivity and market access. Then we have a what we call bottom-up budgeting for barangays. So in barangay level development planning, as part of our practical examples of implementation, engaging in local communities in what we call participatory planning processes to identify what are the priorities and allocate these resources effectively. Example is uh, the bottom-up budgeting. Uh, this program enables our barangays to propose a project based on their needs, leading to more inclusive and responsive development planning. Then, uh, skills training and capacity building, providing training in agribusiness, entrepreneurship, and other relevant skills to empower our rural youth and women. Example is the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, also known as TESDA, that offers a skills training program, especially to our farmers. Then is our Disaster Preparedness and Resilience. Building a community resilience through early warning system, disaster preparedness training, and infrastructure improvement Example is our community-based um, and management approach. Engage the local communities in disaster preparedness and response reducing, um, which this, it reduces the vulnerabilities and enhancing the resilience. So in conclusion, rural development and community empowerment are essential for achieving sustainable development in the Philippines. And by addressing the specific challenges faced by the rural communities and implementing the initiatives to empower the local residents, the country can unlock the potential of its rural areas and improve the well-being of millions of Filipino. So let's continue to work together to build the resilient, inclusive, and prosperous rural communities across the country. So thank you very much for being part of this lesson. So I'll see you again on our next video.